So what about what happens when all these things fail? What happens when we have we stress a material and we strain a material? We already know how to describe how it stresses and how it strains, but what physically happens in the material? We're going to need some more vocabulary words to explain what happens uh, when these things fail. Okay. So we talked about yield before. Yield is where part of the material moves and gives way while another part goes in a different direction. Again, the reason why I, uh, the how I think about this is yielding at an on-ramp for a highway. The people who are yielding have to wait for the other cars who are already on the highway to move past. Same thing here. So this, I think this has been on the internet for a while. It's a plastic sculpture of a ice cream truck. It's supposed to symbolize that the ice cream truck itself melted in the hot sun. And this is what happens when real plastic and real polymer um, starts to melt or dissolve because of chemicals. Um, it literally starts to yield, which means it starts to get drippy. And some of it goes one way while the other stuff goes the other way. So this is a sort of a picture of something yielding, even though it happens to be a, a work of art. Um, a lot of these terms are things that you would use anyway. You don't have to memorize these things. But slippage, in this case, it looks like this was a this is an, this is asphalt. We'll be talking about asphalt or blacktop. You notice there's a road arrow over here. This is the line for the road. Um, what happened is this asphalt got very warm, and then there was a truck on side of it. And just like um, a pickup truck can say, for instance, you hit the gas and you can spin your tires in dirt and stones. Um, when the uh, when the asphalt, the blacktop, happens to be very very warm. Um, and you spin your tires, you actually move the material one way while the rest of the material stays where it's at. So this slippage can happen um, a few years ago here in Philadelphia. We had an amazingly warm summer, um, and we had a few days where it was like 104, or 105 degrees Fahrenheit. That's kind of warm for Philadelphia. And the, the roads, um, 422, um, the Schuylkill, I-95, Portions of those roads that had uh, that had asphalt on them were literally starting to melt, and um, the giant 18-wheelers, the very heavy trucks, uh, were starting to sink into the pavement. And as they would start and accelerate, they would literally push this back as if it was melted mud. So you can have slippage on the road, and you can have slippage other places as well. It literally means that one layer slips past a different layer. It's pretty obvious what happens. We can uh, use terms like scaling and flaking. Uh, this is, happens to be a rusted piece of metal. You can see that the uh, rust, rusted surface is, is flaking or scaling. We call it a scale, just like a fish scale or a scale that a reptile might have, um, like a snake or an alligator. The, the, the scales sort of pull away. We can talk about flaking if you have very, very dry skin. Uh, your dry skin can flake away. We're just trying to find human words that we use to describe um, what's happening with our material here. We talked about necking down. I keep on talking about my fictitious piece of, of, um, of bubble gum. Um, here's taffy being pulled and mixed at a, at a taffy uh, candy shop. There's necking down, another way to describe how things fail. Here's cracking. Here's some more asphalt that has cracked. Here's a poor iPhone that has cracked. We've all seen that before. Um, Here's creep. Um, creep is, if, you've, if you're familiar with horses, this is called a swayback horse. Um, this horse's back used to be nice and straight, but over years of being ridden with a saddle on the back and heavy riders, uh, it's sort of like scoliosis in humans, um, the weight of, the, of the, the horse itself plus people riding on its back, it literally starts to deform the muscles and the vertebrae of the horse, and you get what's called, known as creep. Um, I didn't mean to, to point out to this sad horse, but this is an example of it. Creep can happen everywhere. Where does it normally find creep? Um, uh, a plastic bookshelf. You go to Ikea, you buy a plastic bookshelf, you put a lot, of, a lot of books on it, and then over time that bookshelf starts to bend or bow. This would be a long time test or a long term test. When we're talking about testing, it starts to creep. Um, so creep as in creep along and fall down. Separation, pretty obvious. This looks like it's a looks like a, a computer desk. Again, going back to IKEA, 
This is a laminate, and we'll be talking about that in a bit uh, under composites. Um, here's a piece of wood, and there happens to be a polymer coating on top of it. This sheet of polymer plastic has been glued onto this piece of particle board, and it looks like it's separating, so we call that separation uh, pretty obvious. Um, buckling is when uh, material starts to twist uh, and starts to stop being flat. So if you were to um, buckle these steel beams, you see the twisting through here. Um, if you were to make your bed in the morning and then jump on top of your bedspread and it starts to wrinkle, that would be buckling as well. Um, that's just the term of what this thing happens to be. Um, sort of a very, very famous um, happening where a public um, a buckling happened in a public con a construction project was the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. If you've seen this before, it's because people always always refer to it as a very it's a real thing. Um, it um, it happened a while ago, back in the 30s and the 40s. Um, but uh, w as we take a look at this, I don't think there's any 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 um, any soundtrack to it. So I will either be quiet, thankfully, or I'll talk about it. Uh, let's get this thing started here. Um, so yeah, 1938 to 1940. Let me zoom this up here. There we go. So 1938, as you can see here, um, we're going to put um, anchors into the into the the water here. They're, these anchors are on barges. They're giant pieces of ceramic uh, cement. Uh, they're literally sunk into the river, and then. Um, the caissons, or the, the, the supporting parts of the bridge, are then uh, attached to those big anchors. And then once the bridge was actually, this is a, this is a cable stayed bridge. Um, this is back in the 30s and the 40s, so apparently they didn't have many cement mixers back then. So this is all done by manual labor, so they brought in buckets at a time. And now here's a picture of the bridge after it has been completed, and they're celebrating it. They have flags across the bridge, and they're they're driving across it. It's a regular. I mean, we have these cable stayed bridges um, all over the place. Um, it's not a not a radical design. Uh, the difficulty is that um, without knowing this, not obviously this is the 30s and the 40s, not having very advanced pardon me advanced computers to be able to calculate this. Um, the uh, a very very strong wind caused the bridge to start to sway and buckle. So as you see here, this looks like it's taffy. This looks like it's the cotton of my shirt. It looks like it's plastic, but it literally is ductile steel beams. These steel beams are like six feet thick, but a steel beam moving and straining on a human scale is no different than a steel beam moving and straining on a giant bridge scale. So it behaves the same. It looks like a floppy piece of car cotton or a floppy coat hanger. Remember the cement we saw them pouring? There's cement inside underneath that roadbed. There's asphalt on top of the roadbed. These are cement sidewalks. Of course, these are metal street lights. Here's the cables that are that are um, supporting the uh, the bridge. It's hard to see because it's pixelated. But there's a guy who went down, and there was a car. There was a car left on the bridge, and there was a dog that was trapped in the car. So. Uh, a, a very thoughtful human ran across the bridge, even though it was swaying like this, opened the door and got the dog, and now this person is trying to make their way back. Uh, no one knew if the bridge would collapse or not. They just looked, wow, look how, look how cool this is. Maybe, you know, maybe we can, uh, maybe we can uh, charge money for, to, for people to ride this thing. But just like a coat hanger or just like anything else, um, uh, if you go ahead and you repeat the test over and over and over again, an endurance test, eventually this is going to break. So this this goes on for a while. People had their cameras. Wow, isn't this cool? This is kind of neat. I guess we can't. We're going to have to close the bridge when it's windy out. Uh, but eventually this thing just snaps and the whole thing falls apart. So um, obviously a big disaster. Thankfully no one was hurt. Um, they just didn't have the computer models to be able to to um, model what this thing would look like. Again, it was it was held up by these steel cables. It's a cable stayed bridge, um, and of course we have new design. We have uh, we have resonance dampeners in uh, in new bridges that are cable stayed bridges, like the Golden Gate Bridge. 
this doesn't happen anymore. But just because it's large and just because it's thick and just because it's multiple hundreds and thousands of tons of uh, material, it doesn't mean that um, it won't break and it won't behave just like any other material. Okay, so hopefully you've seen the seen this footage before, but it's just a it's kind of a, it's kind of a kind of a neat explanation of what can happen.